Hey everybody and welcome back to Firefall of History and welcome to 0 0.8 This is a big milestone patch they've been talking about for quite a while the developer roundtable was actually over a month ago now and as such a lot has changed First off you'll notice that the HUD has been completely reworked instead of just your normal four ability slots and your call-down slot you now have four call-down slots five works like normal or it cycles between the call downs as you select them. Six, seven, and eight, as long as they're not consumables that you use up, they will stay there as long as you leave them. You can always rebind them using mouse mode from your inventory, though. Also, instead of just numerals for health and ammo, they've added some nice health and energy bars and two ammo bars. The bigger bar is the amount of ammo you have in your current magazine, and the smaller bar is the amount of ammo you have total. So that's a pretty nice looking UI. I could use it to be stretched out a little more personally. Also, chat's been completely rewritten. It's got some cool functions. They'll be in the patch notes, which are linked below. My favorite is they put autocomplete in. You only need to type the first few letters of someone's name. It searches like through zone and your friends list and army list. It's very nice. Very happy about that since I'm often a squad leader. But the HUD is not the only UI that's got some love. The progression and crafting systems have been reworked a little bit. Crafting is actually completely reworked and the garage is just an iteration. But both of which have new UI to go with them. Let's look at the garage real quick. The progression system has been changed to be spread out more evenly among all four unlocks. There are now five unlocks per tier, and it really, the costs have been kept the same, so it's more spread out among the tiers, and it feels like you're progressing a lot faster. And for the first two tiers, you actually probably do progress a lot faster. This is what this was done because you were hitting a wall once you hit tier three. You were at tier two, and it wasn't too expensive. It was getting up there. And then at tier 3, all of a sudden, you've got the progression item, which is 5,000 crystite, or no, 10,000 crystite, I think. And, like, s several hundred merit points, and 5,000 resources. So they've changed that, they've spread it out more, they've made the progression items cheaper. And you really do get more unlocks per session than you otherwise would. And I've been leveling this Tiger Claw since the patch, and I can say it does feel much faster, if it's not much faster, in practice. In addition, they have added perks. These are unlocked through progression. There are over 70 perks available. You can have up to 105 perk points worth of perks. Each tier of perk is awarded a different number of perk points that it uses up. And you can have a maximum of 10 perks per frame. As far as maintenance, they've also changed repairability. Uh, you can, there are five or six levels, I guess, of repairability. Level five costs quite a pretty penny. You can see I'm only repairing like 28 points and it's gonna cost nearly 20,000 Christite. This is done to they want your items to die out, but they want you to be able to keep the items that you worked really hard for. So if you want to invest a ton of Christite into it, you can keep it for a really long time. For now, I'm just going to go with level 0 because it's crap gear anyway. Talking about gear, though, that goes to the changes in the crafting system. In order to support a new power curve that is in the works, they still need to tweak some of the numbers on it. It was actually supposed to be in this patch, but they... Uh, Hold it at the last minute because high-end progression didn't feel right. First thing you'll notice before we get to the items is that the printer UI has actually been completely reworked. It's now much more user-friendly. It's very nice. In order to start a new job, first you click on one of your slots. Then you decide what you want to do. In this case, we're going to go with manufacturing. Then it opens your recipe list. And you select the recipe you want. Now this UI is actually much simpler to use. Before you would select the recipe, then you'd have your different subcomponents, which you either did or didn't have based on, you know, whether you'd built them or not. 
They've taken the idea of the subcomponents and turned them more into stats. They kept the subcomponents, but now they're just a part of the whole. You click on your subcomponent. If you don't have one, you build a new one, and it takes you into your resource menu. Then you'd select your resources back out, and once all your subcomponents are slotted, the build button will light up, and you can build the whole item at once. And it's very nice. In addition to that, all of your stats, including your quality, constraints, and what you're actually going to get, are listed right here in real time as you slot the resources into the components, so it's very handy. It's much better than the old UI. About the power curve, though, they have removed tiered gear completely. As such, they've done a soft gear wipe. We'll get to that in a few more seconds. The way it works now is that tiers are based on quality. Quality 0 through 125 is tier 1, 126 to 250 is tier 2, 251 to 500 is tier 3, and 500 upwards is tier 4. Each tiered recipe is given a maximum quality. So for example, if we pick minerals and we select this 409, alright that's a bad example, here we go, this aluminum quality 259. Even though it's quality 259, the most we're going to get at it is 125. Just to show this, let's select the ceramic too. Now both of these resources are above quality 125. But we go back and we see our subcomponent is only quality 125. That's because it's a tier 1 recipe. Higher tier recipes also have the benefit of being able to modify more stats, just like before the patch. So that really hasn't changed too much. The other thing they introduced is the profession system. Now, because I've done tier 4 research in all three professions that they implemented this time, I was granted access to all three professions. This will only last, however, until I respec. Uh, after that, I will be given only the profession that I spec'd into. They're planning to add more professions in the future, so depending on what comes out, I may or may not respec. So this is a problem that will fix itself over time. Because you'll have people specking into new professions that... and losing access to all the recipes that they've researched before, and then they'll become a normal player. They won't get to access all three at once anymore. And also the ratio of new players to old players to cha will change, and new players can only ever access one profession at a time. Now I say lose access to recipes, that's only the ability to craft and further research recipes. You will not lose progress in actual research. If I were to spec into weapon production and max out three frames on research and get all their primaries and secondaries researched, I would still be have that research done if I changed from frame module and back to weapon. I would still be able to craft those recipes. So it's not too much of a clusterfuck. They're wanting to basically increase interdependence between players. And it's it's a hot topic. I'm not sure how I feel about it myself, but say la vie. In addition to the major changes they made, they've also added some a little bit of new content. Three new wandering encounters have been added to New Eden. Again, these actually should be the last of the new encounters that are going in. In addition to that, a new encounter has been added for Diamond Head. The first of those encounters are going in, so that's exciting. Um, I'll be linking that at the end of the video, as well as tutorial videos for the new UIs and some of the new systems, as well as a Let's Play. Part of the new content they installed was a campaign. Press L to go into your ledger, or Y to go into your general achievements, and then scroll to ledger. And they've given us five campaign missions to do for now. They are gated behind um, campaign points. These are earned by doing open world encounters. Chosen encounters reward the most. Um, the highest I've ever gotten is 15 at once from a chosen invasion. So, if you're wanting to get through the 
campaign really quickly. Sunken Harbor is going to be the place to hang out. Lots of chosen activity down there. They've also buffed chosen activity this patch, so very excited about that. Using that to segue into the pockets, though, one major change they made to Sargasso and Antarctica is that they removed all the melding repulsors and pushed the melding back to its maximum pushed state. This was to give the players a little more room to play in, as well as to suit the new resource distribution. You can actually... They've actually changed the way they award resources now based on what zone you're in and the tier of that zone. New Eden rewards up to 150 quality. Diamond Head records up to 300 quality. Sargasso up to 600 and... Antarctica is the only place to get higher than 600. So, you can see that thumping is probably pretty active in those zones. Made sense to remove the repulsors. The events, however, have been left intact. It's not like Diamond Head where they took it out to replace it with something mysterious that they are now working on. They've also, talking about rewards, changed the way that open world rewards work. Each open world event specializes in the type of reward it gives. Resources now come primarily from thumping. You can get a little bit from chosen encounters, but not a whole lot. Um, so that's pretty much the only way to get a good quality, or a good quantity rather, of resources. You have to do Ares to get any appreciable amount of Christite. The chosen Warfront, uh, strike teams, death squads, power recaps, all award nice amounts of merit points. And there's also new experience scaling in preparation for the new power curve that they are installing. That's the reason they did the gear wipe to begin with. They want to put a more vertical system in. They've held back. They pulled it at the last minute from this patch because high-end progression doesn't feel right. But expect that probably by summer at the latest, I would think. Alright, now so much changed in this patch that I'm going to actually have to split this into two videos. There is going to be a second video linked at the end, as well as the beginning of the Let's Play and the t new tutorials. Um, going over the balance changes. They changed uh, the Dreadnought class a little bit, and they also did a review pass on the Dragonfly. Made some major changes to that. So don't forget to check out the other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. These are a great way to get people back up to speed who've been gone for a while. And, you know, see where the game has come from. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.